All right, boys, before we get started, as always, a bit of a disclaimer. This is from my perspective, so it is focused on my opinion. I was able to rank as Masters last season in Conquest Main in ADC, and I've played this game since beta, so I'd like to think that I know a fair amount when it comes to this role. This will be a guide to help people with the ADC role and everything it entails. If you don't fall into this category, then this video may not be for you, but you still might learn a thing or two. Feel free to leave any additional suggestions in the comments for future new players to have a look at. It's nice to help each other out. Anyway, let's crack on. I hope you enjoy. Right, we're going to be cutting this video up into three parts. You can skip ahead if you want to just know that information. Part 1 is going to be about the current ADCs that are played and who are stronger than others. Part 2 is going to be about laning phase, where and what to attack and when to do it. Part 3 is going to be on popular builds. Before we get into part 1, make sure to like this video so it can be put out there for all the new players wanting a positive guide. And if you want to subscribe, I upload Smite content 3 times a week. So, part 1. In Smite's current state, which is the new season 9.1, there are a couple of hunters that stand out from the rest, with very good reason. The main reason these stand out is usually pressure, they can gain farm where other hunters don't stand a chance, they have better kill potential and they work well with the current builds. The strongest ADCs at the moment are gods such as Medusa, Izanami and Charybdis. These three gods are banned most of the time in ranked matches so if you're looking for a strong ADC then these gods are your best bet. For example, Medusa is strong at the moment because she has a recent change to her anti-heal ability. It works off her too instead of her dash which makes it very easy to hit and it's great at wave clear. She has high damage numbers making for high DPS in the game throughout. In my opinion I think she has great jungle lockdown meaning she can burst the enemy very quickly in close quarters with a 1 and a 3 as a route combined with a lot of damage. Is an army is strong due to her unmatched wave clear. Izanami has the strongest level 1 wave clear in the game, which makes the duo lane hit level 2 first. This obviously gives the duo lane availability to get the farm and more slightly first blood. Best thing about Izanami is that her basics can hit not only the wave, but the enemies at the same time, which makes her a deadly opponent. Charybdis is strong in the same aspect that she has very good wave clear, and her first and second ability can hit through minions, making her just as deadly. She has a really safe getaway and a powerful ult if used correctly. Now, you've got your semi-strong hunters. If those three gods get banned or you've not purchased them yet or you don't have the god pack, you could always try Heimdall, Sol, Apollo and Chiron. These gods are decent and work well with the meta and are strong in their own aspects. Heimdall is strong due to his mobility with his three. Sol is strong just from the sheer damage numbers she puts out. Apollo is strong due to split pushing and ganking being the meta at the moment, and Chiron works well with the current power build meta. Gods that you probably want to avoid in the current meta are gods such as Skadi, Jingwei, and Cupid. The reason being is that these gods don't work well with the current builds, and 9 times out of 10, if you have a top tier hunter against one of these three, the top tier will win. These gods just don't bring to the fight what any other ADC would. Right. Part 2. As soon as you buy your items from the fountain, you'll want to take yourself over to the green support buff, which is here on the map. Your support will join you in defeating this buff. The best strategy I would advise is that you use your first ability and basics and your support just uses their basics. When this is defeated and your support has picked it up, make your way over to the purple buff, which is here on the map. Your support should have bought something called Hand of the Gods. This is an item that does 200 damage to buffs on your side of the map. Your support should use this item on the buff and then you should both just basic attack it and save your abilities for the first minion wave. Now, after you pick this buff up, you and your support should both have your first ability to be ready before the wave hits each other. Depending on who you're against and their wave clear, whoever has the quickest wave clear is better off. You hit level 2 first, you also get pressure so you can get the XP. If you are on the side of pressure, then you go for the first harpy which can be contested, which is here. Depending on how quickly this is defeated, you should move on to the other harpy, which is located here. Or if it has taken a while to kill the first one, quickly go back to wave and deal with that, and then go back to the other harpy. After this, you also want to contest the other side as quickly as possible to defeat the other harpy. 
This is located here. But be careful, make sure not to go for these harpies if there are minions in the lane, as you will lose XP. If you are on the side of non-pressure, and they have their foot on your neck so to speak, play it safe. Let them engage, let them take the XP, and ask your jungler if they're nearby for a quick gank. If they do gank, you will gain back a bit of pressure. So if you keep the pressure up, you want to take control of that by pushing the enemies away from the wave so they lose XP. This is your best time to try and get a kill and best time to fight. The biggest power spike early in the game is whoever hits level 5 first and gets their ult. Be cautious however, as if an ADC is ahead, the jungler or even the mid laner on the enemy team will be looking at you to gank. Try your best at poking out the enemy ADC as best as you can, as if a fight breaks out you're more likely to come out on top. Beware of that support however, as most of the time they'll be trying to land some CC on you so their ADC can kill you. Make sure to keep an eye on your purple buff as soon as it comes up, and there are no minions, make sure to go clear it and pick it up. If you're an Izan army and you have crazy clear, you want to invade the enemy purple buff, which most likely you'll get rotated on, so quickly, and I mean quickly, defeat it and retreat. And don't forget ward placements, make sure to put them here for maximum effect. Once you hit like 5, 6, 7, that sort of level, your support will probably go mid lane. So this will be the 1v1 lane, although be careful of ganking. If you put them wards where I say, you should be okay. Once you've started getting a bunch of levels, make sure to keep it up and keep an eye on the harpy spawning. You don't want to lose that lead that you've worked so hard to gain. If you're against an ADC that has great rotate potential, such as an Apollo or Chernobog, and you know fine well you can't get there in time, Make sure to put pressure on the tower in your lane, and take it down if you can. Some gold is better than nothing at all. It is almost impossible to out-rotate an Apollo or Chernobog, so make use of something else in the meantime. If this happens late game, you could even try taking a gold fury if you're strong enough. Now, you're wanting to be farming in your lane until you hit level 17 or 18, then you should probably start rotating and joining in team fights. If you're severely underleveled due to the pressure of the other ADC, make sure to chat with your team and inform them you're not going to be on par with their ADC and you need a bit more farm so just ask them to hold off on team fights if they can. When you get to late game, you pretty much have one job in mind. Destroy the towers, destroy the phoenixes, pretty simple. Your builds are going to be targeted against them so you will do the most damage. Your team will protect you while also trying to kill the other players so keep that in mind. Part 3 So, you want your starter item to either be Death's Toll, Gilded Arrow and Mannequin's Scepter. The Death's Toll is for the early and late game sustain, Gilded Arrow is for a late game crit build and Mannequin's is used on Power Hunters for late game Mannequin's Hidden Dagger. We're going to break this down into three generic builds and one mage ADC build. The first build is going to be for a penetration slash attack speed. This will consist of a Death's Toll starter item, then eventually when you hit level 20 you'll buy Death's Embrace. You want to be rushing Transcendence, then going into an Asai, followed by Executioner for the extra pen, and then Kinsays, and then followed by a Dominance to finish it off. If you're playing an ADC that has a Stim, which is an attack speed buff, gods such as Apollo Passive or Izanami 1 counts as a Stim. Then you want to swap out Executioner for a Silver Branch, as this gives 20% physical penetration and rewards the player with more power the more attack speed you have. This build is the anti-tank build. The gods that would work and benefit well with this build, as already mentioned, would be Apollo, Izanami, and then Artemis and Ram. The next build is a generic crit build. You want your starter item to be Gilded Arrow, then eventually when you hit level 20 you want to buy Ornate Arrow. You want to go a stacking item called Devourer's Gauntlet, as Asai will not be part of the build so you need some generic lifestyle. After stacking Devourer's, you will want to buy the Crusher as an early game attack speed item that will help you get late so you can pop off with crit. The next item you want to buy is Atalanta's Bow, which is a crit item that comes with a really good passive. Then. It will be followed by a Wind Demon, which gives you some penetration, movement speed and attack speed when you hit a crit. And then finally, you want to finish it off with a Deathbringer, 
and then into the upgraded version Malicious Deathbringer, which will reduce your ability cooldowns by one second every time you crit on an enemy god. This passive doesn't work on your ult however. Later on you could also sell your crusher for something such as dominance which will make your crits hit even harder. The gods that would benefit and work well with this build would be Danzaburo, Kanunos, Medusa and Heimdall. The last build will be a generic power build for hunters such as Chiron, Ulla and Skadi. You want to buy either Mannequin Scepter or a Bluestone Pendant. Most people swear towards Mannequin Scepter as it has great potential late game when you purchase Mannequin's Hidden Dagger and it has an amazing passive early game against jungle camps as well. You then want to rush Transcendence for the mana and power, this will be your stacking item. After that you want to purchase the Crusher which will be used for the early game power and attack speed and then you want to buy Jotun's Wrath and upgrade to Jotun's Ferocity for the extra boxing potential against another ADC. You then want to buy some anti-heal such as Brawler's Beat Stick and then finally you want to finish it off with Heartseeker. This will complement your mana conversion with Transcendence giving you more power and later in the game you may want to sell your Crusher for Asai if you want more attack speed and lifesteal or Dominance if you want even more power. But just bear in mind if you do go Dominance you will lose that attack speed. Gods that would benefit from this and work well would be gods such as Chiron, Ulla, Skadi and Neath. The final build is a generic magical ADC build. The starter item would be Death's Toll, then purchase into a Death's Embrace when you hit level 20. You want to rush Ring of Hecates for the early boxing potential and lifesteal, then followed by a Typhon's Fang for the penetration power and lifesteal. Then you want to buy Demonic Grip which will give you even more penetration, followed by a Telekine's Ring and finish it off with the Rod of Tehuti into the upgraded version Nimble Rod of Tehuti for even more attack speed. The gods that fall into this category would be Freya, Oleron, Sol and Kronos. I hope you enjoyed this Season 9 How to ADC video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more future videos like this. I will be eventually making a how-to guide for other roles, so I hope you keep an eye out for those. Ta-ra!